In section two, our main focus is going to be creating shapes using paths. We're going to start by being introduced to the drawing of lines. Once we know how to draw lines, we'll move into paths, and from paths, we'll draw complete shapes, such as a triangle. We won't just do theoretical things because in the process, we'll create the flag of Guyana once we have paths in place. And we're also going to talk about, beyond that, the creation of shapes that are really complicated, that have multiple points. By the end of the session, you'll know really everything that you need to know about paths and shapes in Canvas. So let's jump into our first lecture. And in our first lecture, we're going to go ahead and be introduced to drawing lines. We're going to start off with moving our mouse pointer to the position where we want to start from using the move to method. We're going to draw a line using the line to method. And we're going to see the differences between the fill and stroke methods that exist in the API. So let's jump right into it. It's time for us to create a brand new flag. And this flag that we're going to focus on is the flag of Greece. We're going to, instead of using fills, which you could use still the draw rect and literally create all of that with the draw rect, we're going to take a different approach because we want you to meet the lines as well and not only complete shapes. So let's go ahead and start creating it. And to do that, go into your do canvas method around line 16 and create a new method. We're going to call it create grease. And create grease is going to accept canvas. And I'm just going to go ahead and send in our main stage canvas into it. And let's go ahead there and create that create grease method now that we've activated it right underneath our create Paolo. And I'm going to go ahead here and create grease. It's going to accept a canvas. And also it's going to have the same properties as the first few lines here inside of our previous method. All right, so now that we have the basic construct configured, and let's take a look at the flag itself and figure out what are the th things that we need to do to it. So let's take a quick look at the flag again. Let's go ahead and start with defining a background color. And I'm going to go ahead and define my background color to be this blue. Let's do the blue as our background. Okay, let's go ahead and let's create it. And we already created a rectangle. So we're just going to go ahead and literally do the same thing. And I'm going to go to the context. I'm going to define a fill style. And I'm going to set that value to be a color I already pre-configured previously, which is of our blue. And here we go, that's our blue. And all that's left for me to do is to go to my context and fill the rectangle out. What is the dimensions from the zero zero position to the full width and full height to create the full spectrum of the rectangle. That's all we really had to do to create the baseline color for our flag. In the next few steps, the next thing we were gonna to wanna to do is to create the vertical lines or the horizontal lines more accurately. If we take a look at the map, at the flag, we'll see that we have your one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine horizontal lines. Among those nine horizontal lines, we have only one, two, three, four white ones. But really, we want to take the total height and divide it by nine to get to the actual size that we want of each element. To do that, I'm going to literally just add that variable. And I'm going to go and just add one more variable to our list. And that variable I'm going to call line height because we really want to define the height. Now, lines don't have a width and height, they just have one or the two, really just have a width, but so it doesn't really matter that we're calling it height, but it makes sense for us from a perspective of our design right now. What we actually have right here is basically the height of that line. Now, the height of the line would basically be the height divided by nine. That'll be the, the height of each line or the width of each line. Now, if we take another look at our flag as we're continuing doing this, we'll see that there is a bit of an offset of the flags. And we're going to have to take care of that offset. Our flag doesn't start immediately. It starts a push into it. Beyond that, before we even create that offset, let's start creating it and then we'll figure out what and how do we offset. So I'll explain the offset momentarily. Before we even create that offset, let's go ahead and move to the next new topic. And that next new topic is going to be contrary to fills, which we're basically filling up a shape. If we're going to draw lines, we are not going to fill them up. Instead of that, we're going to define their stroke. So I'm going to go ahead and define a stroke style. Now stroke itself is the basically defines lines while fills defines their content, which implies that in the future, we're going to create shapes using lines 
and then we could decide if we want to give them a stroke or a fill or if we want to do both. Now in this case I want it to be white so I'm just going to go ahead there and fill it out with white. Six times F, we got their white. And the next step we're going to have to do is literally loop through our element. We need to loop through four times to create the color four. So I'm going to go ahead here and create our for loop of our eye starting from position one. And I'm going to make sure as long as my eye is smaller, I could do smaller than four and then duplicate it each time. But probably better off for me to do smaller than eight and then jump by two each time. Because what I want to do is I want to get to one, to three, to five, and to seven. All right, if I, let me show this to you in a more visual way. I want to get to one, three, five, seven. So I want to get to seven from one to seven and hit all those targets. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that my eye grows by two each time. So I'm going through one through seven. And once we cross eight, as long as we're smaller than eight, we could continue. Perfect. The next step, we're going to learn another few new methods. And the first new method that we're going to learn is going to be the move to method. The move to method doesn't draw anything on the stage, but the idea behind the move to is that you have a pointer and from that pointer, you're always drawing. Now, the drawing process, there's two main line creators. There's the move to and then there's the line to. The move to basically picks up your needle and moves it to a different spot without drawing anything. It's like taking your pencil off of the page and moving it to a new point. Where do I want the point to be? Well, I want it to start from all the way in the dot there of that width. I want us to get literally to this point. So that's for the X position, we want to start from zero. Contrary to that, to the Y position, what we really want to do is we want to take that I, our current index, and duplicate it by that line length so we're always moving down the height each time. Now, if I just go ahead and do this, and I'm going to go ahead and also draw, once we moved our, our pointer, and I'm going to go ahead and create a line to, you'll notice that the line to process, again, this time around, it's the same point for our Y, but this time around, we want to go to the full width of our element. So basically making sure that we're starting from all the way to the left to all the way to the right, moving and then creating the line. Now, if I go right into my browser and click on refresh after adding this, I'm not going to see anything, but also I'm getting here a small error in line 64. Let me make sure that I saved oh, an extra comma. And you'll see that nothing is seen. Now, the reason nothing is seen is very simple because exactly the same way when we were creating the arc it would not actually go to the stage until we filled it out the same is true with lines only because a line we don't fill we add a stroke to it we want to call the stroke command once we're ready to actually see it so if i go ahead there and call the stroke right after we're done with that loop right after we drew those four lines in line one three five and seven so literally what we would do is we're going from line one if i just go ahead and refresh we're going in line one three, five, seven. Now we still have a few things that we want to configure. One is this line is way too skinny. So I'm going to go ahead and also define right after I define the stroke or around where I'm defining the stroke, also define a line width. Then line width will accept a width. And in this case, I'm going to give it also that line height value because it's the exact same value that I'm in need of. And if I go ahead there and click on refresh, we'll see now the line will be nice and thick. My only problem is, is because the lines are configured from their center point, then I have here an offset of half of that line. To be able to solve that, I'm going to go ahead and add an offset variable so I could add that into our logic. So offset, and the offset will equal the line height divided by two. And once I have that offset, all that's left for me to do is to push that actual position, our actual Y position by that offset all the time. So I'm always offsetting my line just by a bit to be able to compensate for the fact that the line width itself is defined from its center. So if it's 40 pixels, then I'm going to have a padding really of 40 pixels around it. So I need of 20 pixels on each side. So I need to take in that into consideration. Once I've done that, I completed the first step in the creation of the flag of Greece. In the next lecture, we'll continue down the line and complete the actual creation of the flag itself.